chapter 1, verse 1, it begins, this is the genealogy of Jesus Christ, the son of Abraham, the son of David. And Abraham begat Isaac, and Isaac begat Jacob, and Jacob begat Judas and his brethren, and Judas begat Phares and Zara of Tamar. Who are these? Look at Genesis chapter 38. It tells you he's a father-in-law, prohibiting his daughter-in-law, and produces bastard children, children of incest, and they are the great grandfathers of the Christian God, Jesus Christ. A man who had no genealogy, they go and give him a genealogy, two genealogies. Between the two, they give him 66 fathers and grandfathers. A man who had no father, they give him 66 fathers and grandfathers. And God is not one of them. Can you imagine? He's the son of God, but he's not there in either genealogy. My son is here at the back. Imagine me dictating to you his genealogy. And I give to him, you know, from memory, 66 fathers and grandfathers. But I'm not one of them. <laughs> I'm not one of those 66. What am I telling you? What am I telling you? That he's a bastard 66 times over. No? What does it mean? I give you 66 fathers and grandfathers to my son, and, but I am not one of them. What am I saying? A man who had no father, they give him 66. And out of the 66, there are six bastards and bigoters of bastards, according to their own records. In the book of God, is this the book of God? I says, you know, I can go endlessly. The New Testament, it begins. Every book, new book begins. Matthew, it says, the gospel according to St. Matthew, the gospel according to St. Mark, the gospel according to St. Luke, the gospel according to St. John. I'm asking, what is according, according, according? Why according to, according to, according to? I write little books as well, you know. But you'll find my name there by Ahmad Didat. It's not according to Ahmad Didat. If you wrote it, Thinking that I had said or I meant such and such a thing, then you can say, according to Mr. Didat, you know, this is his theory, or this is what he said. It might not be true. You might have misunderstood. But if I write a book, I put my name. Matthew didn't write his name. Mark didn't write his name. Luke didn't write his name. John didn't write his name. These are anonymous books. And you think, well, maybe, you know, this count can only come from Mr. Didat, so you put Didat's name. This can only come from Brother Farah Khan, so you put his name. This can only come from Brother Waris Muhammad, so you put his name. You have no right to do that. Nobody has a right to do that. You are doing injustice to the man. If he hadn't said that, you might not be quoting exact. So, according to Matthew, according to Mark, according to Luke, according to St. John. And internal evidence shows that all said that they didn't write the book. This is what you see from the outside, on the heading. They put, the Christians put the heading. So, in the internal evidence, you read Matthew 9.9. 9. I said Matthew 9.9, 9. but Matthew didn't write it. Why do I say that? Matthew 9.9, 9, when Matthew didn't write it. You see J.B. Phillips. J.B. Phillips, a prebendary of the Chichester Cathedral in England, a paid servant of the Anglican Church, he translated the Gospels into modern English, because the English that I'm quoting to you is a bit archaic, you know, old-fashioned, because I'm reading from the King James Version. A lot of people, they love it. They lack up that language of the King James Version, so I use it. I'm, I'm also used to it. But J.B. Phillips, in his preface to the Gospel of St. Matthew, he says, Early tradition ascribed this Gospel to the Apostle Matthew. Early tradition, that's what people said that this is the book of Matthew. Early tradition ascribed this gospel to the apostle Matthew. But scholars nowadays almost all reject this view. Hindu scholars, Muslim scholars, <coughs> Jewish scholars, no. Christian scholars of the highest eminence, backed by 50 cooperating denominations, they say, this is what they say, scholars nowadays almost all reject the view that Matthew wrote Matthew. The author, whom we may still conveniently call Matthew, which I'm doing, instead of telling you the first book of the New Testament, chapter 1, verse 1. Why am I wasting your time, my time? No, I say Matthew 9.9, 9, Matthew 5.17. Conveniently, I'm using the word Matthew. See, the author, whom we may still conveniently call Matthew, has plainly drawn on the mysterious Q. This Q, 
the letter Q is also in inverted commas. But they're trying to say that Q stands for the German word quella. Quella means sauces. Therefore, in, in, the, author, the scholars, they know what they're talking about. Then they say Q, which may have been a collection of oral traditions. He has used Mark's gospel freely. Who? Matthew has used Mark's gospel freely. In the language of the school teacher, he has been copying wholesale from Mark. And Mark was a 10-year-old boy when Jesus walked this earth. Matthew is supposed to be a disciple of Jesus, an eyewitness and a ear witness. And he goes and copies a 10-year-old boy who wasn't there. And you say, this is the book of Matthew. Poor Matthew. What kind of, what kind of mind did he have? What kind of eyes or ears did he have? That he goes and copies somebody else when he was an eyewitness and ear witness. Now we know Matthew didn't write Matthew. This is it. You, know, you don't have to be very clever. You don't have to be a DD or a DDAC to know these things. <laughs> a little, just a little observation. And you can see through and through. You can deal with swaggers and the likes of him anytime, any day. Allah has given us that destiny. But we don't do homework. See, we listen and we enjoy and say, right, we go home and go to sleep. You have to do a little bit of homework. See, in other words, now you see this, it's right, look, let me check up, let me see something. And you see the verse, huh? it says, Matthew 9, 9, I told you, open it up, Matthew 9, 9, what does it say? It says, while he, referring to Jesus, was going forth into the way, see, this is the old English, King James English, while he was going forth into the way, he, Jesus, saw a tax collector called Matthew. And he, Jesus, came up to him, Matthew, and told him, Matthew, follow me, Jesus. And he, Matthew, followed him, Jesus. I'm asking, did Matthew write that? Or Jesus write that? Who wrote it? Can't you see? This is, these are not the words of Matthew. These are not the words of God. And these are not the words of Jesus. This is not the Injil. We believe in the Injil. What is the Injil? I say, Injil is the revelation, the Wahi, that Allah gave Hazrat Isa alayhi salam. And the Bible tells us, this Bible, it tells us, Matthew tells us, that Jesus went to a certain place and he preached the gospel. In Arabic, Injil. Gospel means the good news. Translated into Arabic, Injil. He went and preached the Injil. Mark says he went to a certain other place and he preached the Injil. Gospel. Luke tells us that he went to a certain place and he preached the Injil, gospel, Injil. And John tells us that Jesus went to a certain other place and he preached the gospel, Injil. I'm asking, did he carry a book around under his arm, under his arm? Did he? Injil? That he, every time he took it out? In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Is that what he was doing? No. Whatever revelation Wahi Allah gave him, that is the Injil. Now they tell you, the Christians themselves, you don't have to do any homework with regards to the Bible. You don't have to make any new discoveries. Whatever they gave you, learn from them and use it. They tell you now, they translate the Bible, the New Testament, into Arabic. They have for the Arabs 11 different Arabic Bibles. I have samples of that. 11 different. I thought there was only one Arabic language. But I'm now told that there are 11 different dialects. And every dialect group is says, look, we got it for you. You are Palestinian, we got it for you. What are you? Moroccan, we got it for you. Tunisian, we got it for you. Southern Sudan, we got it for you. What are you? Syrian, we got it for you. 11 different Bibles for the Arabs alone. In Arabic, different dialects. So they feel that you have no excuse for rejecting the blood of Christ. 11 different Bibles making it easy for you. Let's do So. The Arabic translation, the book begins, it says, Injile Matthew, Injile Marcus, Injile Lucas, Injile Johanna. It's right, right, we accept. You say Injile, Matthew, Marcus, Lucas, Johanna, okay. I said, where is Injile Isa? <laughs> Look, we believe, what did we say? We say we believe in the Injil. When we say Injil, it is a revelation, the Wahi given to Hazrat Isa alayhi salam. That is what we believe. Not one given, to, if at all. If given to Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Who are they? Who is Paul, Peter, and James? Who are they? We are made to accept that it is the Wahi Allah gave to Hazrat Isa alayhi salam. Injil Isa. Bring it. And we will give it a sympathetic consideration. If it is from Hazrat Isa alayhi salam. 
But these are not the works of Isa. Can you see? Look, they are telling you. Why must you go out of your way and say, this is the Torah, this is the Injil, this is the Zabur, and you get caught up with it? No, it's lack of knowledge. Now, all this information is available very freely. In a book called, Is the Bible God's Word? Published by me, we give it out free. I sent out 10,000 to your great country from, from South Africa, airlifted them. 10,000 is the Bible God's word, uh, 5,000 crucifixion of crucifixion, and thousands of other pamphlets and literature. I airlifted it from South Africa, costing me more than 20,000 rand in postage. That's to me, my rand is worth more than a dollar in my country. On the commercial market, it's worth about 50 cents. But internally, that rand is worth more to me. I can get more for my rand than you can get for your $2 here. My rand is worth more in my country than your $2 are worth here. If you buy some tea and cakes here, what your $2 can't bring, my rand brings it for me on the other side. I spent 20, more than 20,000 rand posted. Now your government has got it all. This is now, look, uh, you know, there's some trade sanctions has been introduced against my country. Deservedly, they deserve it. But now I said, look, this has got nothing to do with this. You know, we are not doing business. We're not trying to sell something to you. We're going to give it out free of charge. But now there's a problem there. We wanted these books to be there, available at Baton Rouge. Give it to the people. Let them take them home. You know, a permanent record of what I said and more, more than what I'm saying, because I can't say in 50 minutes, 60 minutes, you know, what I can say in a book. But that book is available to you, absolutely free of charge. You must find out, you know, Brother uh, Hamid Ghazali, you know, he'll be handling the books. But I know our people, you know, we have developed a type of mentality of get, get, get. We haven't learned to give. I said, look, you're killing the man. They have been killing me. 